In this lecture, we will talk about entity relationship modeling. When we do entity relationship modeling, we will create an entity relationship diagram. There are two notations for entity relationship diagrams, UML and crossfoot. In an entity relationship diagram, there are entities, attributes, and relationships. Entities are the real-world objects, such as customers and owners. Attributes are the properties of an entity, such as customer name and order date. We use relationships to link entities together. When we do entity relationship modeling, we also need to designate a primary key for an entity. In an entity, there might be several single attributes or combinations of attributes that can uniquely identify roles in the entity. We call those candidate keys. In other words, an entity might have several candidate keys that can uniquely identify roles in the entity. We will select one of the candidate keys as the primary key. Once we have selected the primary key, other candidate keys become just unique keys or alternate keys. We use the primary key and foreign key pair to establish a relationship between a pair of entities. We also need to learn about the concept of data integrity. There are three types of data integrity. Domain integrity is about columns. We use the column data type to enforce domain integrity. Entity integrity is about roles. We use the primary key to enforce the entity integrity. Referential integrity could be between a pair of entities or different roles of the same entity. We use the primary key, foreign key pair to enforce referential integrity. In this example, we want to establish a relationship between two entities, the project's entity and the employee's entity. We will use the common attribute project ID to establish the relationship. Project ID of the project's entity is the primary key of the project's entity. Project ID of the employee's entity is just a foreign key of the employee's entity. In other words, when we use the primary key, foreign key pair to establish a relationship, the primary key is located in the parent entity. The foreign key is located in the child entity. Here is the UNL notation. We use a rectangle to represent an entity. We use a line to designate a relationship. In this example, it's a binary relationship. Cardinality and participation are used to enforce business rules. Here are the symbols for the UNL notation. Again, 
rectangle is the entity. A line represents a binary relationship. Here is the cross foot notation. We also use the rectangle to represent an entity, a line to designate a binary relationship. Participation and cardinality are used to enforce business rules. With the cross foot notation, we use an asterisk to designate the primary key. The meaning site is specified using a cross foot. One site is designated using a vertical bar. Mandatory participation is designated using a vertical bar. Optional participation is designated using a circle. Sometimes entity relationship modeling is also called data modeling. When we do data modeling, we need to have the technical knowledge about modeling. We also need to know the business. Keep in mind the modeling process is an iterative process. If we can do modeling well, we can make sure that our solutions will meet the expected business requirements. This concludes the lecture on entity relationship modeling.